Hi there! This is Marge from Tales from the Catalogs, and I'm super stoked to welcome you all to the precursor episode for our Season 2, the Q&A episode where we answer all of your questions, read all of your feedback, and talk about anything and everything Tales from the Catalogs Season 1. I hope you enjoy this rather chaotic episode where we talk about details, some behind-the-scenes stuff, and our process on how we made the podcast. So if you're interested in that, go right ahead and listen to the episode. Also, don't forget to follow us on our social media. We have our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, and that's under Amidst Posteriors or Tales from the Catalogs for Twitter. So... I hope you enjoy this chaotic question and answer episode, and we'll see you on season two. Hello, everyone. Did you miss us? Hi. (laughs) Hello. Wow. So it's been a while. A very long time. A very long while. About a year? Really long. And we're back for our second season. Well, not yet. About to be. Excited? Hope you are. <laughs> okay. Um, just to get that out of the way. She's so dead. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tales from the Catalogs. Well, the precursor episode to season two. The Q&A that's supposed to be aired back in season one, but we didn't get to do that. But lots of things happened during the time. College, graduation, all that stuff. And we're back. Just like that. Look at us. We were just employed. (laughs) To think we started this in college. God. It's been a year since we started. It's been two two years, years. We started, started 2022. October of 2022. Yeah, it's been that long. <laughs> I know. Okay, so before we start the q and A, I I think it's... This is a good time to introduce ourselves. Um, like properly at like least. Like properly at this point. So who wants to start? I think we should start with our very first keeper. Oh shit, that's me. <laughs> yeah, no shit, Justin. <laughs> Okay, okay, we can start with me. Um, Hi, everyone. I'm Marge, the resident, well, the director and um, the first keeper, rather, for the Tales from the Catalogs. I am in charge of, of course, directing, casting, uh, voice directing, post, prod, and other stuff. But it's nice to meet everyone. it's so weird to be talking calmly and like not no screaming script. at no a script. microphone. Like script. <laughs> no script. It. We have no script for this Q and A. We clicked record and went ham. So <laughs> with no internet. With no internet. We have no We're internet. No internet. We have no internet. But if you notice something new, we also sound different because we have new, new microphones. microphones. <laughs> Two of them. Well, three. Three, but one of them is currently not in this setup. In, in this room. Come back, microphone, come back. We're currently using new microphones. We finally... Upgraded. Like, upgraded a little bit. So we're very excited to apply that upgrade for season two. Yeah, yo. Yeah, yo. Yeah, yo. It's going to be smacked. Yeah, we also have snacks right now and some water. Yeah, so I hope with everyone listening to the episode i well the q and a episode i hope you have like your drink get cozy have some snacks we have fita crackers with and cheese, cheese, cheese whiz. whiz not sponsored <laughs> <laughs> you wish you but yeah wish. we have cheese whiz and that's pimiento. pimiento and some water yeah so Okay, we're going off okay. topic. So yeah, everyone, hello. I'm Marge. I'm passing the phone to our resident secretary and social media manager. Please introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. I am Marcy. 
as she mentioned, I'm basically the secretary of the group. I also handle the social media. I am also taking over as the sort of art director for Yay! starting with season two because we have some fun stuff coming up soon. Um, but but yeah, I'm also the voice of Ilori. So hi everybody. It's our detective. What's up, everybody? What's up? So yeah, passing the phone next to our favorite boy, our favorite voice, Carrie. Let's go. <laughs> our favorite voice Hello. actor. It's me, ya boy. <laughs> okay, hi, I, it's Koichi. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> one of the co-writers. Of this pod, along with Marge. Hello, it's me again. Yeah, I mainly write and voice for the episodes, as well as do some of the editing along with these two. Yeah, post prod is group effort. It's group effort. Everybody has a hand in the post production, which is it helps with workload, and we get to learn a lot about post prod. Yeah. We learned a lot about post prod. We did. <laughs> and I'm not. I'm someone who does a lot of like audio editing, especially with like radio dramas and of course tales from the catalogs. But I'm also not experienced in theory. Like I didn't learn about this in school. I learned about this on YouTube. YouTube is the true teacher. Of this we we just. Did this on the fly. Yeah. Literally no plans. Whatever. Yeah, no, no plans, plans at all. And Just like go. <laughs> yeah. It was it started as a what if we did this and then we did it. And now we're here. And now we're here. It all started in twenty twenty two as an idea. It was like a random idea one day and we're like, <laughs> what if, right? This sounds so fun. And thank God for Marge, who was like, yeah, what if? And then pushed us to do it. Because we have a track record of uh, <clears throat> not doing things. <laughs> Some plans just remain as plans. Not this yeah. one, though. Not, not this, this one. one. I don't know. That was pretty interesting. Because, I mean, even me, uh, we do talk about doing a lot of stuff and we keep saving them for like a later time. Yeah. But I was very surprised we were able to keep up with this one. I thought it was going to be like, oh, what if we do a podcast? And then like we talk in the podcast and then we go to jail for talking in the podcast. Go to jail. Thankfully, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but then that what if with a little bit of like dedication some planning actual planning i'm so God. proud of us you guys we actually <laughs> kept up with the plan we actually right? kept up with the plan we said what if and then we did it as kuichi mentioned and here we are <laughs> and here we are it's very it's crazy <laughs> it's it's been a crazy it's so crazy to see how far we've come since like the very first the yeah. first episode. Mm. Which, like, nothing was planned. <laughs> nothing at all. It was very... I mean, we started with, like, very small ideas. Yeah. Very small ideas. And then we we built off of that. And then... Just well, we're not going to say anything. But <laughs> just but a we'll, lot of things popped up. Yeah. And, like, sort of the po the podcast sort of, like, just started writing itself it's in a way. It as its own entity at that point. Yeah. And we can't wait to share that with you for the future. Actually, this season. Mm -hmm. This season has a lot of things going on. <laughs> and this is a season that was actually planned. <laughs> Very. And like... um. Okay. Introductions. Marge, Marcy, Koichi... For season two, we are the core, like, team working on the season. But I'm pretty sure everyone heard people in season one. Like, other than our voices, I hope you're not sick and tired of our voices. <laughs> because we're gonna be here for the whole ride. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The entire thing. You can't get rid of us. 
But yeah, maybe it's a perfect time to do special mentions from season one. People that aren't here right now for the Q&A, but were part of the season one. We had two of our co-writers for season one, and that's Ryu and Ro. So both of them can't be here for season two co-writing with us because... Um, they have a lot of other stuff to deal with right now, um, mm -hmm. you know, now that we're getting into appointments. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, Ryu has like boards. board exams to mm -hmm. worry about, so he's not going to be able to do anything about this. Yeah, so for now, it's just the three, three of us, two of them writing specifically, so... Uh, pretty much, yeah. And for the first season, they were a big help, big, big time. They were part of our writing team. They came in around episode three, I believe. Yeah, it was that's when episode they came three. Through. Yeah. So they can't be here, unfortunately, but they are very talented writers. I just hope you you love the stories that they made as well. Mm -hmm. They were also, apart from writing, they were also able to voice a few characters in season one. Uh, Ryu was actually present in our first episode. He what? was the random passerby who warns Detective Elori about going into the cave. But... Yeah, um, um, he's very <laughs> he was very ominous. ominous. He was Joel and Gabby. Um, I forgot his name in <laughs> Tadana. <laughs> what? Do I forgot their name we as don't well. Have the notes right now. <laughs> yeah, we don't have the notes. We don't have internet. We can't pull up a lot of the things that we have online. But he was able to voice in episode five alongside Kuichi. Yeah, he was my partner there. Yeah, Ooh, love partner. interests, love interest, love interests. Question, Question mark. mark. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, um, and many more others. With Ro, I remember her specifically for her role as Grace she in Aikalisod. Uh, that's episode two of season one. Uh, she did amazingly in that episode. Uh, we're gonna talk more about that later, but we're gonna have a yapping. We're gonna have a oh. yapping session. <laughs> Basically, if you open this episode and if you made it this far, very early <gasps> on. I Oh, um, cut for the readers. Um, <laughs> Kuichi just gave Marge a pita cracker with cheese on it, oh, and shoot. it kind of almost fell, and she caught it between her fingers. So now she has um, cheese pim pimento fingers. I have cheese fingers. But Yummy. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for loving me enough to make me a cheese whiz pita cracker. That's a little smushed on the top <laughs> <laughs> because I hit it. But yeah, we'll talk about the episodes a little more later on. If you made it this far, know that this episode is just going to be the three of us yapping. So, yeah, it's just a yap session, really. It's a yap session. And you get to uh, hear more about our process, how we do things, some questions we have. From our listeners that we will be sharing later on and answering for you. Um, so speaking of which, we should probably move on to those. Yeah, <laughs> for yapping again. Yappy, yappy, yappy. Okay. So should we start off with the forms? Okay, let's start with the questions itself. Let's start with the the questions that other people have. Okay, so first question. Um, since the podcast was mentioned to be a passion project, what are the short-term and long-term goals um, that the team aims to fulfill along the production of this podcast? Okay. That is... Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Before... A very loaded question. <laughs> before we answer that question, um, actually, when our first season ended, we put up a feedback form for our listeners. And 
in the feedback form, we allowed our listeners to rate our podcast in terms of production, post-production, writing, and we allowed them to sort of give us like criticisms, compliments. encouragements, compliments if they had any, and we allowed them to ask questions that we will be answering in this Q&A episode. So the first question was... Um, what are the short-term and long-term goals of the entire Of the production? podcast. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Did we even think about this? <laughs> I mean, man. Have we even thought about this? I mean, we fully? have plans. We do have many plans, yes. We have been conceptualizing and writing and noting a lot of like plot points for the future of this podcast. Short-term goals? What are our short-term goals? Finish season two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah, just take it like one one, step at a time. one episode at a time. Yeah, pretty much. And the short term goals of the well, short term goals is probably apart from finishing it. Of yeah, apart from I think that's a very long term, and I don't think we'll be done anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, I said season two. <laughs> <laughs> season two. Short term goals. Just be able to like have a hobby apart from work. We've graduated. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> we graduated in we started, June. We started Ugh. the podcast. Okay, I have, I think, a bit of like an idea on our short term goals. We started the podcast October of 2022. That was our third year yeah. in college. About to leave, like, I think, second semester. It was second semester. Of our third year. And. The podcast, in a way, was just sort of a, like a method for us to constantly hang out with each other and like have an agenda and reason as to why we could hang out because yeah, we go to, to go different schools. Yeah, we do, we go to different schools, different departments, different departments, and also this was like near the end of the COVID pandemic yeah. itself. So we've been missing each other we've been deprived, deprived like of physically <laughs> of like seeing each other and everything and it was just a great way for us to at least meet up for a day or maybe meet up a few times a month again mm -hmm. just so we have things done and now we have D, &D sessions every now and then mm -hmm. every now and then and that day is nearly every weekend we love the D, &D sessions <laughs> and besides the D, D sessions give us more ideas for the podcast which is also good they have a lot of plot points that really help with the podcast itself as well. So, you know, interaction. Wow, ASMR with the crackers. Wow. <laughs> you can't hear it unless yeah. I put the mic near. Nice. Oh, I don't know. It's not picking up. Crunchy, crunchy. Okay, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Production. <laughs> there it is. Sound. Aside from finishing season two, I guess we're also planning on the TikToks mm -hmm. and other social media platforms that we're going to be like posting short form videos on. Yeah, that's a short term goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To sort of advertise the podcast in small increments, we have been planning a lot of social media like engagement posts, mm -hmm. like new videos, maybe. Bloopers. Bloopers. And God, are there so many. <laughs> Short form videos. There's so many bloopers. And I can say this, right? I Possible lore drops. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So much lore drops. <laughs> On the page soon. Hope you guys are excited. We've been excited. We haven't slept. I feel like that's my trademark. The lore drop. <laughs> the lore you, drop yeah. right here. I swear to God, it's always him. <laughs> if you want good lore drops, we have Koichi here. He mentioned that we do a lot of D and D sessions, and he is actually the DM for these sessions. And we have so. multiple campaigns, mind mm -hmm. you. And it's about always to be six. <laughs> about to be six, six campaigns. He's the DM. We're the players. <laughs> My brain. We love you. It works. <laughs> it fucking it, works. It does. And you're great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Long term, have we answered long term? Long term? In the long term, I guess it would be 
apart from the whole marketing everything that's already in the short term in long term to actually make this maybe viable for i don't know maybe monetization if we get there probably Mm -hmm. because as much as we love doing this we also put a lot of effort in it and it Mm -hmm. would be nice to maybe at least get small like little donos or anything to up our production qualities all that stuff so i guess in long term just to up the production quality itself using maybe donos and everything maybe do stuff to give back to the community type of deals yeah at some point we put in a lot of time into this and we're all doing it for free and it's for free (laughs) so you guys better appreciate this (laughs) Oh, okay. We might um the we still have a lot to learn in terms of marketing the podcast itself. None, I think of, us, none of us have experience with marketing. Marketing or we're, business. We're learning. God knows we're going in blind. Yeah, we're Extremely going in blind. blind. And like we're being very transparent about that because we don't know what we're doing. Yeah, we just <laughs> we were just like what if we did this? What if we did a podcast and like, then we just It'll be fun did the podcast with the resources available for us in terms as broke college students as broke college students and you know and it's a good broke. time it's a good time to upskill and learn more about marketing we might open um certain like dono platforms for the podcast soon we're so. still in we discussion are, we're still in discussion people. regarding all of that like we're still going to choose a platform but all in all, maybe at some point, if you guys want to donate, go ahead. We will be very thankful. It's fine. It's fine. If you don't want to donate, that's fine as well. As long as you're enjoying the podcast. That's yeah. what matters. And I think another long-term goal for us is to sort of serve the story that we're writing. To serve. To serve. Like, to tell the story we that we have actually have, have like a full production set up. Yeah. A proper one. Because a proper. The current setup up until now is my bedroom with, at the time, we had one mic and it was a mic from Miniso. Yeah. <laughs> it was those small Ooh. earphones. Really nice <laughs> mic. That was, that was the setup <clears throat> back in the day. That was a lifesaver. Yeah. That microphone. And like, rest in peace. Before we had like proper microphones. And these are like starter microphones. These Very aren't much. even we're like. We're not sponsored by Miniso, by the way. <laughs> we wish we were. The- these aren't even like high end microphones. But like, they are starter microphones that work. They sound fine mm. for what and we're going before for. And before we had these. These like beautiful sounding things. Beautiful. We only had my phone and my pair of earphones that I use on the daily. That's what our, we had. <laughs> and on our like sad little laptops. To this day, we still use them. We still use the same to laptops. Edit the audio, the <laughs> videos, and everything. These are the only tools we have. We have a very not ideal setup, but we're making it work, and that's what matters. We also don't have a treated room. My room is just the quietest. But it's not treated. With the help of audacity, sound dampening. Yes. Anything can happen. Post prod magic. <laughs> magic. You, do, you guys don't hear the turkeys. Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, that's going to come up a lot on the episodes because they're there. Bastard fucking turkeys. The turkeys will remain they a are, challenge. For as long as they are in my house, they will be here. The dogs, too. And the dogs. And the dogs. They're not as loud most of the time, but they will be there. It's surprising they're quiet, actually. (laughs) So yeah, short-term goals, long-term goals. We want to be able to tell a story that's worthy of our listeners. And of course, worthy worthy for us as creators and writers. But we want to do that in a way that's sustainable and non mentally draining. Non mentally draining. Mental health kids. Mental- <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we want to do it one episode at a time. So. Don't want to overburden. Okay. Next question. Next question. Okay. This one says they kind of have two questions for us. That's fine. 
What made you all decide to do this podcast? And have you run into any difficulties while making it? Or was it pretty much smooth sailing? To put spoilers, no, it was not smooth sailing. <laughs> <laughs> so many scheduling problems. So yeah. much. Even, Even now, now. Though, though it's a little more manageable since we have the job we have a job we have a set schedule and compared to before with school less obligations in that regard we have a little bit more time to maximize our resources and of course our schedules but oh it was not smooth by any means it's it was a struggle apart from the whole we're broke and we don't have proper like <laughs> um tools we also just like had struggling like moments with time with getting people to um basically meet deadlines everything that is like a really big issue Ooh. we had in season one as well as <laughs> since we never planned anything out everything was like right then and there we're gonna do it no plans anything that happens happens it was very impromptu and um recording sessions we did them in a day. Yeah. Yeah, one day. One whole day. For an episode. Yeah. Up until sometimes at night, <clears throat> if if ever. Each episode was a day, and so was the post-prod. Yeah. But it's Everything. like a, it's a separate day from the recording, but post-prod had to be done on that day as well to prepare for release. It was... I mean, at the time, it was a comfortable schedule, knowing it was, it we were still in class. Yeah. But yeah, we didn't have like enough time to be releasing a lot of episodes in one go. We released one episode per month because, of course, we had to balance the podcast, our school, college, thesis, thesis, <laughs> thesis, wow. and like personal obligations of our own. Yeah, like there was a lot to balance, a lot of homework, thesis, projects, all that stuff. And on top of that, we have the podcast. We have other stuff. It's just, it was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> a message to How everyone who want to start a podcast but don't have a lot with them. Just plan. Use what you have. And it, it'll work out. It worked out for us. Somehow. <laughs> God, somehow. We literally had close to nothing. <laughs> Sometimes we make, like, deadline by an hour. <laughs> by an hour that that is the that is the vibe that is the chaos yeah you just have to just like put in the work of course take care of yourself God, as well that was a struggle in itself yeah we try our best to sort of like look out for one another and like i as much as i also put like small pressure for everyone to like finish on time. I encourage everyone to like talk to me. That's impossible to do. So we try our best to look out for one another, maximize our schedule as best as we can with the given time because it's it's not good to just pour everything that you have on a podcast especially knowing that our podcast isn't there yet it's yeah. not at that level yet but yeah it's always important to like take care of yourself <laughs> take care of yourself that's as simple as it is take care of your friends considering we're friends who work on this podcast together 100%. so it's always good to be more considerate of everyone's time I know. We had a lot more of like scheduling problems than anything that came up. Yeah, it's on schedule. Keeping up with each other. Yeah. Keeping, making sure people keep up with each other. Mm -hmm. And like, that's very impossible to do, knowing that not everyone in the season one crew. We're in the same space. Everyone was in different schools, different depart. Could be in the same school, but different, different departments. departments. None of us were classmates, so none, none of us, us had the same schedule. Different province altogether. Yeah, straight the hell up! I swear. 
So it was very difficult to make sure everything aligned when everyone else was in different places in like different times. Lots of compromises had to be made. Only thing that held us together at the time was Discord. Yeah. <laughs> if Discord wasn't there, I don't know what would have happened. Not right sponsored, now. but thank you, Discord. <laughs> Free Nitro, please. Just kidding. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> yeah. Just, I guess, keep clear communication, especially during production, post prod, and day to day life, especially if you're working with friends. Make sure they're not burning themselves out yeah. working on the podcast. I'm looking at you. Like, podcasts and Same stuff. Same with me. Same with you. Ay. Ay. We burn Thinking. out. We burn out together. <laughs> it also helps that we're in the same workplace yeah. right now. But it's also, I think one of the things that, with regards to that, one of the things that we can sort of remember that we need to align ourselves with is that when you start a podcast with friends or with a group of people, everyone agreed to put in the effort to work on the podcast. And everyone has like a set standard, like a similar or rather a, a matched set of standards with that agreement. And like if everyone's on the same page, you don't have to be in the same schedule or at the same place at the same time when you know yourself that everyone sort of agreed to help out, put in the work, put in the time, and, you know, less issues when it comes to that regard because we sort of remind ourselves that, you know, we signed up for this. <laughs> we decided this together. You ain't leaving. <laughs> this was a, this was an entire decision made by all of us. So if we're gonna burn, we're gonna burn together. We're gonna burn together. One one suggestion is find something like something else than the podcast to work on yeah. creatively so you don't burn yourself out. Yeah. And don't forget that outside of it all, have another hobby. Don't place everything in one hobby or mm. if you're sick of it, what are you going to do after? Yeah. And God, thank God we have enough hobbies to last us. We have a lot. We, we learned or we picked up new ones. So much. Mm. <laughs> and I think one of the things I appreciate about starting this podcast, true, we had some like turbulences along the way in terms of like the progress of the podcast. But one of the things I'm very appreciative about Tales from the Catalogs is that it gave us an opportunity to learn things about each other, which is really good in terms of like how we are as people who work together and how Absolutely. we are as friends. It was really nice and it helped build like bonds, but also boundaries with each other that were not just constantly like enabling each other to do yeah. this because we're friends we're learning to be more critical and like efficient we're with each other keep each other like hey um i think you're overextending yourself there yeah or like in terms of the uh what do you call this the conceptualization we're like thinking up ideas and then one person is like maybe this maybe we can do this and we remember one detail we talked about from like a previous meeting and we we're like but that's gonna derail this yeah. and yeah. so it's it's good to just sort of like be critical of one another but also foster like this really somewhat healthy like somewhat healthy environment because it's very difficult to work with your friends because 100%. there is a biased perception yeah. there but I'm so glad we were able to, like, balance that out. Yeah. It's really good that we know how to, you know, put up a boundary between you're my friend, I love you so much, and also you're my coworker. Yeah. We are going to make sure it stays that way. Yeah. Like, we know when to put our friendship aside and our workplace aside yeah. as much as possible. Being and able that's to accept criticism 
and advice from your friends while you're working with each other. It helps and a lot. And being able to criticize their work as well. Yeah. Call call each other out. Call your friends out. Like, within reason. Within of reason. Of like, course. If they deserve it, do it. But, like, don't call them out just because, because like, haha, I want to hurt your feelings with this. No, yeah, no, 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 no. but, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I love working on this podcast because it made me appreciate you guys more because we... From what the, when you make that face, <laughs> but yeah, it made me appreciate you guys more. The bond we build because it's very, it's very like n- small progress, but to me, it's very visible how we're growing together because of this. Absolutely, working with each other as friends has helped, like set a line across the sand yeah that if someone crosses it we're just like just go back go back go back go back let's not go there yet let's not go there <laughs> i don't think we're ready for that no 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 sit <laughs> sit down it also helped with um being able to keep up with each other yeah. in terms of like day-to-day lives yeah because we have an excuse to talk to each other yeah like on the constant actually yeah. very you have no choice. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's not that um, you need an excuse to talk to each other. Sometimes you just talk to each other, but like having an excuse helps push you to talk to them. Yeah, and if you don't have an excuse, make one. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like even if it's for nothing, just go like, "Hey, mm. uh, I need to yap to you about this." Yeah, and just start. Start it, yapping. Yeah, it it I'll goes meme. it goes back to how we started the podcast. We started with what if we wanted to do this, and we did. We made the podcast. Yeah, we started yapping, and then I started. We started yapping. Everyone yapped right back. Yeah. <laughs> yap, 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 yap. This thing, this became a thing. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's not just us three either who started the yapping. Yeah, it was our other friends as well. Yeah, who started yapping back to us. <laughs> With concepts that we could use. And it was really good because the podcast, in a way, is also built from community Absolutely. and like from friendship. The power of friendship. The power <laughs> of friendship. Ash Ketchum? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, next question. Okay, with the next question, I wait, I read this one earlier. Um, have there been instances where w- school, work, or other hobbies to- uh, took too much time from production of these episodes, rushing the process to make the monthly podcast schedules? Wow. Yes. We just talked about <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, we did. Very, A lot. Very much. Like, at the start of the podcast, like, season one, mm-hmm. school took up a lot of our time. Yeah. Especially during exam seasons. Like, there were times when we had to push each other like hey um your part of the script isn't done yet could you please send it to us for multiple times we've sent that we we would have to send that because they wouldn't have been able to finish their script yet at the time and they still had exams so we just had to wait until after exam season yeah we kind of made it a whole thing that once it's exam season, that's the one time you're allowed to step no, out for a bit. Like, not work on the podcast. Yeah. The art of compromise yeah. when, like, a crew member sort of, like, has exams or, like, has important academic stuff to do. That is very within reason to just consider their, like, position and sort of wait on them a little bit that's where we learned to compromise the, yeah we learned to compromise we also learned how to slightly bend and maximize the schedule yeah. but of course within the dead the, the set date yeah. for release and it sort of helped with i guess the work ethic in a way yeah um another thing about that so long as it wasn't for like just I just want to do this so I can't really work on the podcast. So, yeah. So long as it's not for frivolous reasons, it's fine to have a bit of delay 
if it's like work, school, uh, family matters, yeah, it's fine if you get delayed a bit, as long as you finish your work. Yeah, that's the important thing, really. Mm-hmm. Because we also had to remind each other that, in a way, we all agreed to do this, and everybody sort of signed up for the fact that we needed to put in a little more effort because everyone else is making effort but everyone else will consider if you have an act like a valid reason to not work for a period of time and i mean you're allowed to like take a step back yeah if you give us a reason you talk to us about it yeah yeah, we we could literally talk about it and just <gasps> agree that they could step out. Oh no, <laughs> we forgot to introduce another crew member. <laughs> uh, uh, oh wait, but he's down. coming back. He's he's coming back for, for season, season two. two as a voice specifically. Yeah, as yeah. a voice, and we love we love him. We really do. Okay. And this he's an the, example of yeah, this, though. Uh, yeah, he example. stepped out because of academic reasons. And he told us. And yeah, we were just like, yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Just, you will take on your workload. Yeah, he was very um, upfront with it. He's like, hey, um, as much as I want to help out a bit more, I have to like keep my academics up, especially since he's a scholar. Sweet boy. We love him. So smart. And Hi Dale, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Truth, and like he's a really hardworking guy, and we appreciate that he was just upfront and like no bullshit, just straight to the point. Like, hey, can I step out? I really need to focus on this. We're just okay. Go You're ahead. Like okay. Yeah, he was the one who did the covers for episode one. Yes, four. he yeah. Dale is our resident graphics designer. And he was in charge of creating the graphics for our publication materials on the page, like our social media pages. So for the first five episodes, I think that we posted, he was the one who made those. And I really appreciated that he was very upfront and honest with it. And like, that's the sort of energy that we kind of need. Yeah, we kind of need in terms of like separating the fact that we're friends and the fact that we work with each other on yeah. a podcast those are very different headspaces and so for him to have been very honest with stepping back and needing to focus on his academics you we were like oh yeah sure man go ahead you need that we all need to get out of the academe <laughs> honestly and also just because we're friends doesn't mean you're obligated to stay yeah that's the important thing you're just because you're my friend and we work together doesn't mean you have to do everything because you're my friend you're allowed to have your own life and step out yeah don't don't let um a passion project like this like we started this as a passion project it still is but don't let it like take away from your personal time if you're feeling like you're already giving a lot of your personal time to the podcast take a step back look at it again and maybe shift it a bit so you have more time to yourself so you can actually relax and not think of oh what am i going to write next for this episode what am i going to like do for the special effects or like how am i gonna record this yeah it's good to take a step back take a breather when you do step back it allows you to see the bigger picture and it helps a lot. So, rest yeah. is important. <laughs> Shifting around your schedule to fit what you need is very important. Mm-hmm. So, you don't burn yourself out that quick. It's what worked for us. Big time. Absolutely. Big time. Especially with how different our workloads are at school and personal life. Yeah. It really helps to at least know what to prioritize as much as possible. Yeah, and... Um... Shifting around your schedule still works right now, actually. Yeah. Because, well, yeah, we are working at the same place and we're still, you know, going around with each other. Our workloads for the pod are very different from each other. Very different. I myself have less workload because I only do writing and recording stuff. And the pod 
editing. But I'm going to be also starting to learn along with Marcy the art of video editing. <laughs> I will be guiding them. <laughs> Because one of our heaviest workloaders here, I'll be honest, is Marge. She has <laughs> Hello, the heaviest everyone. workload. I mean, directing is a lot. It is. So it's a lot. You I have mean, I'm to... also starting to self-direct. Yeah, it's I'm pretty learning good. learning to self-direct. Because like with directing, in a way, it is a collective. Everyone here are directors in their own right. But I'm sort of like the one just... Giving everyone a small push to, okay, let's do this, let's do this, because, yeah, anyway. <laughs> because we tend to kind of get derailed yeah. very easily. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, I was thinking we get going to the next question, because we're taking so long on this one. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> the next question is, it, it's the last one, really. Um, I'm curious, oh wait, my phone, why? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, um, it says here. I'm curious also to know how the team divides work among uh, oh. uh, members. We we're just, just mentioned really. do you, like um, do the members record separately? Are there members who strictly assign who are strictly assigned to stories, or does everyone get to you know take both writing or voice acting? To answer the question, yeah, everyone we just has talked to, about it. Yeah, we just talked about it. It really depends on where your talents lie. Yeah. Play to your strengths. And if you want to take on the workload, like, I know I want to take on the video editing workload, so I'm going to start learning about it because I myself don't know how to video edit. Mm -hmm. And I started working on the writing because that's where I'm, yeah, that's where I'm most comfy in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I actually started the first, uh, Episode, episode yes. with just a random Google oh, Doc mm. while riding a Jeep to Marcy's house <laughs> because the traffic was so long and I got bored during the Jeepney ride. <laughs> yeah, like imagine this motherfucker just like texting his Jeep and everything because he had an epiphany and then once he got to my house, Marcy, Marcy, I have an idea. Read this. <laughs> okay, okay, what is it? Yeah, and that started the whole Jake Apostol monologue. Yes, for Cold Case episode one. Absolutely. It was fun too, because you wrote that, you made Marcy read it, both of you like showed it to me, and I was like, yeah, this one, we can work with this. And then episode <laughs> one was birthed. <laughs> and then, funny thing is, um, I have a lot of the voicing yes. roles. Like, if you've noticed, I am a lot of the male voices. Almost all of them. Yes. He is. He is. <laughs> I am in four-fifths of the episodes. We we call him, like, our Carrie. Our no voice Carrie. <laughs> I was supposed to rest for this season, but then I found, I, I found the um, casting for our episodes <laughs> this season and I'm still the one with the most episodes to voice. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> but also, you're the one who... I wrote who, them. You wrote <laughs> the episodes where you voiced. You chose this. Hey, I only wrote two of those episodes. Two of those, but one of them you had the option not to do it, but you still went with it. You know what? I live with this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he is our voice carry. We love this boy. He is our baby boy. <laughs> it's very <laughs> difficult in terms of resources to find male voices. And as much as we would like to like hire, hire people outside of the crew, we don't have any available compensation for them. Even if we sort of list it as like a free gig, me personally, it's a I lot feel of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work, and me personally, I feel bad not being able to give something back that's Same. worth their time yeah. because and time is essential. Thinking about it, this season is much more like taxing to the voice yes. of the person like acting in the script because most of our scripts this season are monologues, mm. 
So it's just going to be that one person voicing that entire script. So if you think about it, it's a really big ask for them to do it for free. To do it for free. And we feel really bad. You know, people deserve to get compensated based on what they put in. And to not do that for us, at least, it doesn't feel right. Yeah. And I mean, if they do volunteer, I mean, we had people in season one volunteer to yeah. voice. Yeah, but that was more of um, more like group work and like their lines were a bit like smaller, smaller compared. and they were distributed to other people in the script as well. Yeah. And in our way of compensating them, it's because the easiest part of that of that is because they live in the same city, similar provinces, close enough yeah. that we could just feed them food. Yeah, if they <laughs> they come here I bring ramyun or indomie. <laughs> Not and, sponsored. <laughs> and then, you know, we have I a little wish. <laughs> and then we have an entire cookout we buy drinks and everything that's how we compensate with some food some drinks all that because they deserve something nice yeah <laughs> ah. it's a lot it's a lot especially this season for the voices it's emotionally taxing on w- in some episodes for the voice er- like voice talents because they're emotionally heavy this season. Yeah. Not saying that last season wasn't emotionally heavy, but there's some here that are a lot more hev- heavy in the emotions. Yeah. And that's pretty difficult considering that we have a small pool of voice actors, which is mostly us. It's just mostly us. It's mostly us. A few other friends that we pulled in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some vocal talents are just literally still like, just yoink yeah yoinked volunteered or we like do asked in passing or we do it ourselves this is a tayo tayo production moment yeah, honestly, yeah. <laughs> it's a from scraps thing and to think we started without like any voice acting experience in this no voice really acting don't. experience i however had experience in radio dramas yeah, I, so I that's... did some newscasting as well in yeah. like junior high i got nothing guys <laughs> <laughs> but you you're doing pretty well you're like doing very great. well Thank you. one of my favorite like performances in season one are marcy's because yeah. like she was the able Diwata. the Diwata, so good very the... rich voice very versatile yeah. and she has really good control over her like her... emotional yeah. tone and i as a voice director i'm like mm, it's crispy. the way she also <laughs> like speaks in the character yeah itself with the Diwata it's actually like <laughs> Hairs on end. Hairs on end. With Gabby too. Post me doing post prod for Diwata. We'll be talking about the episodes more later on, but I just wanted to share one of my favorite post prod moments was editing Diwata because we had to add like this sort of echoey, spooky effect for the Diwata's voice. And getting to hear Marcy in post, oh, it was an experience. <laughs> She was sharing that on our GC too yeah. while editing. We do update each other, send in the voices and everything, and half the time it's going, it's us going, oh my god, <laughs> it's so good. It's either that or we're on call in Discord while editing, and then we're just gonna let each other listen, and we're either all, oh, whoa, that's whoa. scary, wow, that's <laughs> great, wow, that's sexy, <laughs> really good stuff. Considering there, we had small, there resources. are some episodes that have lines cut for a reason. For a reason. <laughs> <laughs> the script changes are real. And there are some lines that are, are like on the script they're different and on like recording they're different because we like to improv. Improv. Live life with risk. Live life with with ricks. With ricks. <laughs> the ricks. <laughs> people rub (laughs) (laughs) which is also our friend (laughs) yes so yeah we have a lot of that workload marcy you do social media management which is 
also something I've never done prior to this. So I'm learning as I go. I don't know how I'm doing this. I ask Marge a lot, like, how do I do this? I don't know how to use this software. Help me. I do a lot of the writing and voicing a lot. Most of the voicing. Yes. And I also do most of the cooking whenever we get together. (laughs) He is our favorite cook. I mean, all of us can cook. It just so happens that every time these happen, he ends up being the main cook of the uh, of the group. <laughs> Guys, what are we eating? Also, me opening the fridge. <laughs> He's already opening the the fucking fridge. My parents, at this point, uh, like expect us to just drain the fridge and go like like we're gonna cook. Like okay, okay we some. Do it. Are we cooking dinner later? Yes. Yes. Okay. We're cooking dinner. Okay. Mm. So that was it for the questions. We still do have the feedbacks, though. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Let's move on to feedbacks we got from our listeners through the feedback form. We have four responses. So we can start um, with this one. Um, so far, I think the use of effects, the storytelling, and voice acting is very good. I was very impressed with episode one and wanted to continue listening. I'm very proud of you all. Well done for making an amazing storytelling podcast. Oh, and you think, like, I don't know who this is from, but thank you. you. Are, but they don't <laughs> see the name here because we don't have internet. They're yeah. anonymous. I yeah, think. They're we the gave anonymous. our yeah, listeners an option to send in their feedbacks with their names, or if they wanted to stay anonymous, they can. Whoever sent this, thank you so much. That means a lot. Thank you so much. We 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 worked so hard. <laughs> I can't take compliments. <laughs> take it. Take the compliment. How? <laughs> like this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It definitely was a lot, and receiving feedback like that, knowing like what we went through in the process, it's it's very, very validating. Fulfilling. Very fulfilling. It feels validating. <laughs> feels great. Thank you so Yay! much. For our next one, we have another one is I genuinely miss your podcasts, and I would so uh, do anything. It says so here. Wow, <laughs> do anything to hear more of the stories you make. They are very well thought out, and the way it feels like I'm in the story is amazing. You say well thought out, but I'm sorry. The the scripts <laughs> that I write personally are not thought out. I'm... Thank you. <laughs> No, because little fun fact, especially for season one, all the stories were made the month they were posted. Yeah, that is the fun <laughs> fact you guys are gonna get. It's that none of the stories were pre-planned except maybe episode one and two, because yeah. episode one was done like a month prior because we were just planning it out for fun. Episode two was based on the story Marge already made. It yes. was just upped up and like repolished and everything and did amazing everything else was on that month like in one two weeks done two weeks yeah in two weeks weeks of writing two weeks of writing one week of recording and then a week one day of recording one day of recording we just like leave the week to finish our school stuff yeah and and then post prod on the weekend yeah one day on the weekend prior to release which is usually the next week it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. None it's, of it was thought out. So it sounds. Thank you. It sounds very, um, hectic, in, hectic and, and it intimidating. Is. It was, but it worked, it worked. <laughs> somehow. <laughs> and we were able to keep up with academics as yeah. much as we could. Yeah. We graduated. We graduated. Our sweet March here is cum laude. Latin honor. Thank you. I almost got a Latin honor. I'm, I'm it's stupid, okay, guys. <laughs> we are all. More than a Latin honor. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> but yeah, um, the reason I say that my episodes that I write are thought out though is because of my writing process. I just let my fingers type. That's it. I can attest. <laughs> so can Marge. And like with Marge, who like has the layout of things, like she plans things out. It's very wow. <laughs> <laughs> I I look at it and I'm just like. Well, I could never do that. It's it's the decade of, of writing writing lessons in theory. And of course I, I really am someone who 
can't really work well without like a set plan. I mean, I do things spontaneously and they just sort of fall into place in some way. But in terms of like technical work or anything involving like files, documents, making sure everything is like properly laid out, I usually have like a plan. I make like a timetable, I do this, I do that. And it applies with writing. I usually have an outline because it's my... It's very organized. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> like every time I read her scripts to like proofread and like write criticisms on it and comments, I'm just like, well, I can't really add anything to this because it's already well thought out. And, <laughs> Thank you. and reading through it, it's like, okay, there's an entire flow. It's very consistent. Yeah. There's not much to say anything against it or 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 anything. It's just pure compliments. The only thing I could add were like some changes and modifications to wordings, grammar. But that's it. In that's terms it. of the actual <laughs> flow, she did great. Yeah. So we don't do anything. We just read through. It's like, okay, this is already pretty good. With, we just need to voice it. With Koichi, he's like, he writes as he types. His fingers do the <laughs> typing. My For fingers. me, my brain is too fast to keep up with my fingers so i outline everything before i get to write them i mean like it's not that my brain work it's like well my brain works fast as well it's just that i don't have a filter yeah <laughs> you don't, you don't. marge marge has a filter set up <laughs> for her thoughts to become like sifted through and streamlined mine just like chaos <laughs> And it's so fun as the one who's not writing, as not as like someone who's basically watching over them while this happens. It's so fun to see the pure difference between both of them. Because one's like, okay, there's an entire flow. Wow, so nice. You look at Kuichi's. At one moment, it's like, okay, there's a flow. And then something derails a little bit because it's in a different, <laughs> because there's a different paragraph that kind of should be on the other side and then it goes back to flow blah 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 and then I open it the next time it's fixed up but then there's a different thing it's a process <laughs> and it's so fun you just gotta trust okay you I, gotta I trust, trust him just let his process go it looks chaotic it is but it's fine <laughs> it works for him and that's what matters with Marge it works for her and that's what matters workflow <laughs> workflow you have to <laughs> sort of adjust yourself to how you function yeah. with how you work. <laughs> and it helps. Oh, it works out. We finished episodes. We finished. Exactly. <laughs> and they turned out well. But man, writing is so weird <laughs> when it happens. <laughs> Not the double mic. Because <laughs> when, when we write and we're in the same space, I can just look over to her like laptop and just see how organized everything is. And I'm just like, why can't I do that? <laughs> <laughs> Neurodivergency is fun, guys. <laughs> Whoever said that, I'm going to hunt you down. <laughs> <laughs> lovingly. He means it lovingly, right? Sure. <laughs> That's a yes in Quichi speak. Okay. <laughs> the organization on my end, I'm glad that that aspect helps everyone yeah. in a way. It, God, if we didn't have a schedule like this, like the one you made, mm -hmm. I don't think anything would have been done. Yeah. We wouldn't have moved past episode two yeah. to be generous, really, if we didn't have a set schedule. If we didn't have a Marge, this podcast would not exist. <laughs> At all. I, I won't lie to you guys. If it's just me and Koichi, and we have a track record, mind yeah, you. I'm just saying as a concept. Which has happened a lot. We have many things that just never went out of, like, concept. Marge is our biggest reason it's even here. I am and we the, love her. I am the the dream weaver. Whoa! Oh, this is <laughs> weaver. Uh, hey. oh, we shouldn't spoil that. Oh. Mm. Uh, okay, okay, okay. What else? What else? Next is both a compliment and a criticism. Ooh, There'd I love be to times hear. where the characters sound a bit stuffy. Mm, yeah. Maybe because of the microphone use. Though I yeah. can say yeah. that this hasn't been an issue at all in in the later episodes. Regarding other stuff, I think the, the podcasts are at the uh, perfect length. Yeah, a perfect length to keep the listeners looking forward towards the future episodes. 
I always like how the story is written and delivered as well. Great job to the team. Definitely looking forward to new content in the future. No need to worry about the mic issues now because we have new mics. We have new mics! Woo! And like, as mentioned in previous episodes, we had a different mic. And in episode one, it was a completely different mic it, from the yeah. later episodes too. Because that one was my old shitty condenser mic that I got for um, online classes. It was really crap. It was really stuffy. So I understand. <laughs> it was really bad. It worked for the cave atmosphere. Though. Yeah, it worked. It did. Um, the one thing that helped with the stuffiness for episode one was that the concept was more on listening to a tape recorder so we had to add like a grainy sort of like recorder filter on post or in post rather and so that sort of helped with the atmosphere in a way but moving forward from episode one that's when we changed the like recorder and microphone yeah, to when the, con- when the concepts are more varied Mm-mm. wherein there's like someone roaming around someone writing events happening real time yeah yeah it helped a lot that we had a different mic it was it was a lot of trial and error to a be lot fair. of and trial I'm glad and you enjoyed error. everything and and looking forward to everything thank you so much Thank you. Okay. Eee, next one, one last is I honestly enjoyed all of the chaos. However, for me, I do get a little distracted by all of it sometimes. <laughs> My only criticism is to take it down like a notch, basically. Chaos. That's all. I mean, it does in a way with how we do our progress, like with the progress of how we do an episode. Some of it just sort of bleed out into. The entirety of the episode. And so that is something to note to for like season two. Things we've learned so far that like sometimes organization is key, but chaos. Chaos reigns supreme in this friend group. <laughs> I will I cannot stress that enough. We do try to take it down, mind you. We do try to lower the chaos. It just likes to slip in like a little worm. Mm-hmm. It just it's it's there. It doesn't leave, and it sometimes likes to tell you, "I'm here." Mm-hmm. Hello. It was. Uh, I'm sorry if the chaos was too distracting for you, but we've toned it down as much as we could for season two. We're trying, <laughs> but yeah, I'm taking note of that. Um, it's very. It's a very broad, like feedback in a way because I'm not sure if they meant chaos as in with the recording, sound effects, sound effects, the the script. The acting. Too many people. Too many, yeah, too many people, question mark. But that is something to note. It's valid. I think uh, one thing to sort of like make a goal from that feedback is to deliver efficient and clean episodes in a way. But like clean in a way that's not hard for our listeners to like listen to. Yeah, but still enjoy process of how we're trying to portray it yeah Yeah. so that's pretty much it for the responses and compliments and and uh criticisms so i guess we can start yapping about episode one let's start with the very beginning (laughs) yeah like i said earlier episode one started with just a google document in a dream Started in a jeepney ride where I got bored. Wrote Jake Apostol's whole monologue of being afraid and in, being in a cave and him dying, essentially. Yeah, it all happened in a jeepney. And then I showed Marcy and then we showed Marge. And then, boom. Episode. Episode one. I think that that Google Doc was the biggest catalyst we had to starting this podcast. Yeah. And all because I had like, I was listening to like, how people were afraid of drowning. Before, I, before I went to like, go over to Marcy's place, I was listening to a podcast while bathing. Mm. 
not really a podcast, but more like a documentary on how people became afraid of drowning and of deep spaces. Yeah. So my brain was like, oh, what if it was someone stuck in a cave? And so Jake Apostol was born. Yeah. And died. And died. <laughs> he was born and then he was he taken away. And died. <laughs> he's, <day>. he's Jesus. <laughs> no. no. He is the Jesus of our <laughs> podcast. You cannot tell me otherwise. He was the herald of everything. He was the herald of everything. We we love Jake. He was the he key. It's a constant joke. Yeah, he, he was key to a very vital conversation that we had that sort of just trickled down into what we're doing now. <laughs> Pretty much. Again, he is the Jesus. He is the catalyst. He is economics trickle down economics it's just, it's just economy, economy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah he is the very start and regarding how everything else flowed after it was an entire conversation on how it would flow like how would this monologue work for it for an entire episode yeah. hence why everything else was born <laughs> yeah. we can't just like it was also more of a we can't just post one thing yeah <laughs> and just disappear off the face of the planet which could have happened without a schedule. Yeah. That we could have done that. We yeah, could just we could, have done that. we could have posted Jacob Postal, called it a vanished. day, and then no tales from the catalogs, I guess. No, we were like did you have anything else? Yeah. Yeah. And then Marge was like, Oh, what if I do this? Yeah, and that's the start of episode two. <laughs> Aikalisud was born. Well, it was already born. It was just republished. Yeah. And honestly, with Aikalisud, it didn't start as a story. I had a character that... Mm, in a way, the funeral director in Aikalisud was just this random thought I had in my room, in silence, where I was like, I'm someone who is very... Eh like interested in like going to cemeteries as a very young kid i grew up surrounded by a lot of my grandmas and grandpas and so like a lot of old people pass away they passed away all around me so i grew up like attending a lot of funerals and then out of the blue some time ago i was like what if i made a character that's a funeral director oc but the twist is he has like an old radio that he uses to sort of channel through his clients to mm. talk to them. And like I had that on a post-it note and I just put it on my pin board and it was there for a while. And I remembered it. And when they when Koichi was like, do you guys like have any more stories that we could possibly list down for this possible podcast? We don't know that's going to happen yet. I was like, why have a funeral director like OC? Write it down. Write it down. <laughs> and write it down. Then they were write it like, down. write it down. Write it down. <laughs> this happens a lot, mind you. And yeah, with that, the funeral director OC was considered, and I wrote a story for him. And yeah, it was one of the most uh, sensitive epi- episodes for me. It really was. It really was. I spearheaded a lot of the writing for episode two. It was very. It was a very emotionally heavy episode because of some. We we had like a very heavy theme for it, very sensitive, and a lot of the main characters' experience on episode two is actually sort of like a reflection in a way of what I also went through. And it was good to find a healthy closure with that episode. And like, personally for me, my one of my favorite episodes in season one is Aika Lisud. But yeah. It's in my top three as well. Yeah. Same. It's, it's a very lovely story. Mm-hmm. My top one is still Tadhana. Yeah. <laughs> when we get there, we're gonna yap. We're gonna yap. <laughs> but yeah, that was like, a, like a general overview of how episode two was made. It was made with a lot of love and a lot of self reflections, a lot of crying. It was a lot of tears. It's generally just a conversation between like a deceased person 
and a funeral director. But, you know, I was, I'm glad in a way I was able to make something out of that conversation. Yeah. It remains one of the more meaningful things I've written thus far. It's one of the more heart wrenching episodes, too. And personally, I love the heart wrenching episodes because I know those are carefully curated yeah. to show absolute raw emotions. You have to, like, really feel it. And they're really, like, the biggest tear jerkers. Yeah. Episode three was hectic. A lot. <laughs> Episode three was it was Gabby. Gabby. Yeah. We had Gabby. Episode there three. Was casting problems there. Mm-hmm. As what the original voice we had for Joel's older sibling was supposed to be a guy, but he kind of stepped out. Uh, not really last minute, but. He was not available. Yeah. And he wasn't really confident in voicing. So he stepped out. And yeah, we we accepted that. So we found someone else, mm-hmm. which is the female voice for... For Joel's, jo- Joel's uh, sibling. sibling. Um, another thing was that writing that app, uh, Gabby's original voice as well was supposed to be Ro. Yeah. But she wasn't available as well, so Marcy stepped in, and that that was actually a really good uh thing, like a blessing in disguise, because uh Gabby's voice with uh Marcy's very high pitched yeah. um tone mi- mixed with the post prod uh, magic mm-hmm. was gave a really really good creepy vibe that it fit did. Gabby's character and like. As a voice director, we heard Marcy in episode one, Cold Case. She played Elori. our detective Elori. And hearing her in Gabby with a totally different take in tone and like pitch, she showed versatility there. And I was like, mm, asset. <laughs> mm, asset. And like, Originally, I was so excited to see Ro like voice. It's like yes, because she has a very high pitch voice. It's barely changed since we were younger, and it's like okay, she fits the vibe. She's a creepy little shit. Perfect. But then at the time, she had to go to a different part of the country for family stuff. I remember because it was around around Christmas. Yeah. It was around so Christmas. she couldn't come, and we had we really had no other option. So I was like, you know what? I'll take over. It's fine. I can I can do a baby voice. It's fine. <laughs> It's gonna be fine. And it was. Um, the dad and the mom. <laughs> <laughs> that was always for these two. It was. Okay. It was. Time to play the fun facts of the various <laughs> things that happened in the episode. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so. Kamusta yung boilet? Kamusta yung turkeys? again to reiterate from earlier we have turkeys my house has turkeys bless my dad for getting these as a gift we've been raising them since but they have been the biggest pain in the ass when it comes to recording everything because (laughs) we record in one day right and it's usually at the start of the day we come in right every single recording you'll just hear (laughs) especially if we're trying to like raise our voices they would respond they go and mind you we had a very sensitive like a a pair of earphones that's all we had it's a pair of earphones and we do everything in post and like i do a lot of noise reduction but even the noise reduction cannot over- treat the turkeys. Yeah, it could not overpower the turkeys. <laughs> going- <laughs> I do the noise reduction. You could still hear the very faint. <laughs> so, as much as we want to get rid of them, they're also there. And the amount of times I've seen March storm out of my room, to sh- chase them away because they like to hang out near my windows. Bastard. We have a video of that, but let's not show them. Let, let, let's not. That <laughs> let's was. Let's keep uh, it here. Maybe I still have that video. I know that it's in the, like the group chat with yeah, the others. The group chat. Yeah, but I sent, I sent that video to the group chat immediately. <laughs> it was iconic because it's, imagine 
she's storming towards the turkeys <laughs> going like go away <laughs> like flailing and then whenever oh, they go oh is it there yeah wait hold on hold on you know what? play the audio can you play the audio Please. Make it louder. <laughs> but for context can you imagine this fucking bitch going outside and like go away shoot they respond and goes <laughs> the goat. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I don't know if you heard most of that, but yeah, that's if you heard the turkeys, that's one of our um, environmental assets. hindrances. <laughs> assets? <laughs> They're an asset to our declining mental health. Yeah, sure. sure. Um, um, <laughs> Another thing, um, a discovery in episode three was I did not know I could get my voice that deep. Yeah, <laughs> that was the first time he's attempted to deepen his voice. Koichi played the dad, and I played the mom in the family, and it was very interesting because <laughs> you'd think, "Wow, it's an episode with a family." You would ha- probably have gentle parents. No, the episode starts with the parents Arguing. screaming at each other. <laughs> so, th- there's that. Familial. Familial drama. And to make this funny, they're both queer. This makes it so much funnier in, the- <laughs> in hindsight. Because two queer people who have no real intention of getting, well... Now that I can't say that. <laughs> no, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> but, but like, both are queers. Huh? They're playing a couple that is not queer. <laughs> and they're arguing. <laughs> and it's so fun to watch. Because right after the recording, they hit, they hit like, the pause button. They go back to like, oh my god! <laughs> we sound like that? <laughs> I didn't know I could sound like that. Yeah, you oh did. God. <laughs> like, the discrepancy between angry parents who don't get along to oh my god bestie oh my god you sound like you did great <laughs> i did not know i could swear like that in tagalog and sound like that but yeah i think gabby remains one of our more chaotic episodes very chaotic it checks out but we're not gonna talk about that, we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> that's for you to find out soon <laughs> have fun anything else Mana. Mana. This, Ooh. I was not much involved in Mana. Yeah. Aside from writing. It was a very feminine episode, actually. This story I remember you mentioned. The characters here, the general thing of the story, was based on a previous radio drama that you made before, I think, right? Yes. Well, it wasn't really based, but then I Spot. sort of like took the vibe for it. Because we were able to talk about this, like, unknown creature in a cave. And then we had a funeral director who can talk to his clients. And then we had a a chaotic jack-in-the-box bunny named Gabby. But then one of the goals we had for this podcast is to highlight, like, local filipino like urban legends but then have our own original like take on them and then i was like we don't have an episode talking about aswangs yet and man we live in the visayas that's a home of the aswangs hello baby (laughs) we have abundant stories of aswangs in the visayas and we were like what if we made an episode with an Aswang character? And so we thought of Mana. <laughs> so with Mana, we had um two characters. One of them is Isabel, I think. And Isabel the, uh, and Teresita. Okay, Isabel and Teresita. And one of them is a researcher, like, researching about, like, like local folklore and yeah. urban legends. And, and that was Sita. And that was Teresita. And then we had Sabel. Though we call her Sabel. Um, her name is in, Isabel. It is Isabel, but then we call her Sabel in script and um, in recording. Mm. 
And she was the guide who showed Sita around town, showing her, like, the history of the town, why it was known for, like, the aswang activity there, why it was rich in folklore. And Sita didn't know that Sabel was actually part of the folklore <laughs> in that town. She is the lore. <laughs> she is the lore. But yeah, it was very interesting to write an aswang that's not like typically found in like the roof of your home. Yeah. Like, or like licking waiting, through a fucking window. Or like God. turning into an animal. It was more mundane. She it was a normal animal. person you could talk to. And that's like the thing with Visaya Naswangs here. You don't really know who they are. Who they are. You could see them at night as different things. They're shapeshifters. But during the day, they could be your neighbor. Yeah. They could be your people. they could be like your governor, your mayor, oh, your, your lover. teacher, your yaya. <laughs> they could be anybody. Yeah. And like you wouldn't know. And so it was nice to sort of like take that into the daylight setting wherein we had Sabel as a tour guide and Sita didn't know that she was one until, well, until the end. If you listen to the episode, went, yeah. <laughs> one of my kind of favorite roles to play. <laughs> I love playing you, Sabel. You did amazing with Can her. you believe I just woke up when we recorded that? Yeah. <laughs> I just woke up that day. I that helped with your voice quality that mm-hmm. episode actually. Yeah. Just woke up. I had no water. I was just like, "Oh my god, what time is it?" And then they're like, "We're on our way." Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that really helped with her voice quality for that episode. Yeah. Because we huskier tone. Yeah, we wanted like Sabelle to be a little more on the husky tone, a lot more not really sensual, but more on like ominous. like an ominous, light, sort of faux friendly. Think <laughs> uncanny. Uncanny. That that's the word. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next is episode five. Tadhana. Tadhana. My, my favorite episode. <laughs> um, okay, I don't know about the others, but my main inspiration for episode five was actually River Song and the Doctor. Ooh, from Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to be sponsored. <laughs> like, if you... I think if you watch Doctor Who and really took note of the lines of River Song, you would recognize some of the lines I wrote in the script. <laughs> Especially uh, Javier, the revolutionary. Yeah. Some of his lines are from pulled directly from River Song. Which is it it worked for him, honestly. Yeah. Cause honestly, River like very headstrong person. I was the one who was spearheaded that episode, right? You did. Spearheaded and voiced. Yeah. So Javier was really inspired by very fiery like personality from River and sort of kind of sassy. Yeah. And then Angelo was wait. Angelo Wait, Angelo was the revolutionary. Javier is my character. Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> Sorry, we don't have the scripts on hand right now. It's been a while. Yeah, and yeah. we don't have internet. We don't have yeah. internet. Javier was my character. Angelo was um Ryu. Ryu, yeah. And Angelo was supposed to be rebellious, and Javier fell in love with him at first sight. I went with that concept and ran with it. And most of the dialogue there really helped that I was right in front of Ryu, and we played off of each other it while we were recording. It was really good. I, Ryu, as a person, is great when it comes to playing a character. He's very good with Especially um, guys who are kind of like, how to put this, emotionally unavailable. <laughs> Emo- <laughs> so what a way the, to put it. <laughs> putting him in the place of um, Angelo, who was the most emotionally available in the relationship, was a, a, challenge, a challenge for, for him. him. And he did amazing, mind you. He did great. 
And these two doing the lines while me and Marge just watch on the side like, oh, I oh my God. honestly, as voice director, I voice direct everything. Oh, everything. I was about to say most of the episodes. Most but my no, ass. It's everything. As the voice director, I did very little directing work on episode, episode five because I was like, okay, I see the script. It's very con. It's a conversation, and I set I set the recorder. I put the mic between them, and I was like, "I'll start." You can go from from this line to this line for now. You can do double takes if you want. Just go ham with it. They started, and I was left in awe. <laughs> <laughs> legitimately an experience to watch them just play off of each other just well like minimal interruptions needed just a few maybe reword this say it a little differently but all in all they just went ham and nothing else needed to be done it was fine just need sp- like post prod that's it post it's great it was amazing and it was very different from like the first four episodes that was our mid-season yeah episode before we took a little break yeah. and with episode one and episode four it was very direct very present time but with episode five we sort of like go back a few timelines away because it was colonial between era. yeah it was like spanish colonial era we wanted to highlight that time in history and it was between two queer men. Two queer men. One of them was a Filipino revolutionary, and yeah, one of a, them was a a Guardia Civil. Who imagine how forbidden that is in that timeline? Yeah. As Guardia Civil, who is Spanish, a Filipino and revolutionary, Catholic. and they're both queer and Catholic <laughs> and Catholic. And in that time. At that time, that it was, was very. It was no. considered. Oh, it was no. not allowed, and so it was. The stakes of that episode was very high, and one of the things I really like about that episode is that the introduction of the episode. Oh, Row wrote that. Yeah, it doesn't start with their timeline. It was a story that these two characters Diwata's. talked about. And it was about like local, like the waters yeah. that fell in love with each other, but fire and water, a fire and water, and that's also a very forbidden like yeah. union. I mean, they can coexist, but they cancel each other out, yeah. and one of them gets either snuffed out, one of them evaporates, evaporates, and I really like that that like story that introduction at the beginning just weaved its way into how angelo and javier yeah. were as people and as lovers and oh yeah <laughs> me yapping story story wise it's one of the more interesting ones to play with because it's the polar opposites trope like mm-hmm. full on and javier playing how the, this could get them killed javier was the silent type and then Angelo was wow. yap, 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 the yap, 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 yap. The listener yapper. and the yapper dynamic. <laughs> but yeah, it was really good. It was a challenging episode for our voice actors, but it was also one of the more meaningful ones yeah. because it wasn't entirely. It wasn't a horror episode. Well, it's it's too the horror it's is too forbidden society. lovers it's too forbi- forbidden lovers who are queer that's a horror episode to me <laughs> and, and honestly it also means a lot because majority of the team is queer yes. we are queer like the three of us in this room right now queer queer the writer gay gay right, the writers gay. queer gay. the voice actors queer yes and this it is it means a lot this to is us. a queer um queer spearheaded queer creep spearheaded created pod created by queers yeah sort of podcast and then there's episode six the i think episode six was a joke app it was <laughs> because the plan was it was always going to have a joke episode for april fools so for april we made a joke episode it was supposed to be a joke at least <laughs> uh, more on that season two <laughs> and then 
the most I can say in episode six, I guess, was it started as a joke, and so we wrote the script thinking of it as a joke, and now it blossomed into something else for season two. And but well, you're you'll gonna know. find out about you're that. gonna find out about that. You'll know. <laughs> so, so all we could really yap about for episode six is that we made it as a joke, and everything for the recording, we meant for it to be comedic. Nothing was really mm. fully planned. And I think that was when we came back from the break. Yeah. And so we were like, we just came back from like a two month two month break by that point. By that point and we were like, you, you know what? Let's let's go back. Let's not stress ourselves out. Let's do a little something light. And it's the April episode. Yeah. It's April Fool's. Make a, just a chill episode. Let's make a joke episode. But then, I mean... It's it is still, still a, joke a joke episode, but it has its it, um, has a, it has its own depth to it, especially with season two. We can't reveal much, of course, but it does have its relevance in the timeline and lore of everything that's going on. Yeah, it's an important episode. It sounds like a filler episode. It's not. It's not. It's more introductory in a way, or it's like a precursor to yeah. something else. But foreshadowing. Zip. <laughs> and then we have episode seven. Another, episode nine. another very oh. heavy one. Hello and goodbye <laughs> is extremely heavy as an episode emotionally because of the um, themes of SA. It's scary in the sense that it could happen. It could happen to you, to it's anyone. Real. boy or to girl, anyone, boy or girl, and literally anyone could do it to you, even you think you trust mm. it's the scary truth that anyone could be a threat Mm-mm. and it played off in episode 7 with three friends it starts off with the whole case itself Ilori finds it and she reads through and listens through oh sorry um, listens through the entire recording that they found on site and we see three friends who were making a podcast ironically us <laughs> but the difference here is um, they were mostly for horror stuff, right? Like in terms of let's look for ghosts, ghost hunting stuff. But then there's something off with the dynamics. Very off. And we find out why. If you listen, you know, you know. If you, you know, know, you know. You know. <laughs> but yeah, it was that episode didn't actually like start because of the fact we wanted to highlight like an actual social issue that's really relevant but it was just an episode where we were like maybe we should write an episode because a lot of like the horror stories we grow up listening to are like Ouija board spirit of the glass yes. spirit of the coin and we were like what if we like made an episode where the characters utilize those divination tools and we were like what if a Ouija board yeah. And then it just sort of, the concept, like, just sort of formed itself into, like, oh, these three friends who make, like, ghost hunting podcasts use a Ouija board in one of their friend's house, like, ancestral their ancestral house, the prime of the house. Prime of the house. <laughs> oh, the bloopers are going to be fun. Okay. Um, <coughs> it was very interesting to play as... What was his name again? Mark. Mark. <laughs> you were... <laughs> it was, this bitch. It was very interesting to play as someone who is, like, a total opposite of me. Yeah. And, like, okay, d- disclaimer, none of the things happen... It, they are three podcasters in that episode. We are also three podcasters It was a coincidence, guys, okay? Team, but none of that shit happened with us. <laughs> God no. no, we do have our horror experiences, but those are those are nothing. The the horror the, experience happened to me. Yeah, the sensitive part of that episode as well that didn't happen to us. Let's put that out of the way. Uh, another thing was uh what else again? Something actually happened while we were recording. Oh, we were okay. okay. Okay, this is the fun part. Um, <laughs> I remember be- this was a very fun episode. Um, the people recording in that episode was me, 
Koichi and Ro. Ro. And, I was, um, and Marcy was Detective Elori at the time. You were I remember I remember you were having a sore throat. At My the time. throat was dead, guys. <laughs> I was recovering. But yeah, at the time there were three of us, and then it was an episode where the three characters were also facing each other, and we were like, you know, it's a big group. Maybe we should like not utilize Marcy's room and like sort of sit outside in the living room where there's a lot of space just to sort of like immerse ourselves that oh we're in a house right now maybe we should like get into these characters head spaces because they're also ghost yeah. hunting in a house somewhere and we were recording <laughs> I personally heard like a chair move in the in the, the dining, dining area. <laughs> and at the time, there was only Marcy, Ro, me, and Koichi. Marcy's parents were at home. Her brother was out, I believe. He was. And no the only home. person... Oh, one well, of the only things that were there that could make noise was the dogs. And the dogs were outside. literally outside or at our feet. <laughs> so, literally... No one else was around the house. The animals were outside or near us enough that we know exactly where they are. When something happens. <laughs> and mind you, disclaimer, my home is haunted. I, I will admit that. Regardless if you believe, like, supernatural shit, I, I know, because I live here, that my house is haunted. Both the houses here and the one near, like, next to us, which is also ours. This, this place is haunted. That is, like, one thing you need to know. <laughs> but yeah I heard like a chair move in the dining area and then I had to stop recording I was like did anybody hear that <laughs> and they were like no and I was like oh, okay <laughs> and then we just continued recording like nothing happened and then we moved back in here and then we moved back in the room to record like I think the ending yeah because I I had to scream at the. <gasps> I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it was my hair clip, but you know, uh, we had to record the end of that episode in Marcy's room. Marcy had a sore throat at the time because she was the one who voiced the, the stranger, the person that my character Celine like bumps into as she was running out of a panic from the house and marcy sounded very different there why she just recovered from being sick and had a sore throat i had a really bad like cough that it ruined my throat which <laughs> happens often whenever i get sick and that day i was supposed to record with them but with my voice being dead i couldn't be lori so that was another delay of its own but because we had another character and no one else was around like to play the stranger they were like hey marcy you sound different you sound different you wanna you wanna do the voice for the stranger it's like you know okay <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's that's the case with the whole uh my throat was dead but i still voiced <laughs> versatility question mark are you guys okay? Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to fix uh, my hair clip. Sorry. But it's okay. Is this... Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think that's yours, actually. This isn't right? mine. I no? don't have a hair clip like this. Okay. This is mine now. <laughs> Do you want... I no, mean, it's okay. I'll borrow it. I'm using it. the black one anyway. It's okay. But, yeah, hello and goodbye. It was one of the Spring. more... Heavy episodes yeah, very heavy. because of the implications on why the friend di the friend group dynamic in that um like epi like between the characters were very like tense and awkward, but it was a very fun episode to record because like initially everyone was just like screaming, having fun. And then, and then we we got we got to the heavy stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that's hello and goodbye. For episode eight, we have. Salo, salo. Uh, I, love ah, I love cooking my family.
the <laughs> concept itself was funny. Mind you, that whole prompt, we have a prompt list. Yeah. And on the prompt list, it was just, I love cooking my family. <laughs> and it, you'd never know what that would, like, imply. Imply. Yeah. You, you never know. Maybe the person just stopped, like, like uh, I guess, didn't write, see that they didn't type in, like, I love cooking with my family. And they just put in, like, I love cooking my family. But no, it was, I love cooking my family. For Salo Salo, we had two characters in the scene. Mm-hmm. And it was a dinner between these two characters. Mind you, two queer women. And I am very privileged to be able to have played one of them. And one of them was Marcy. I think I it was um, I even, was Danny. Yeah, you even Danny. Eight. And it was, it sort of like, mirrors the casting choice in episode 5 Tadhana because Marcy as a voice actor one of her strengths is playing unhinged characters like very ominous sort of like sultry and scary characters and that was Eve and for some fucking reason we decided to switch it up. We decided to switch it up. Sort of like challenge each other in a way. Danny was... The calmer one. The calmer... The more rational one. Rational. She didn't know what was happening in that episode. And that's usually Marge's strength. And that's usually me. I'm very, like, I she, don't... She's the leveled one in yeah. terms of voices. She's the one who's normally, like, playing the straight man role kind of deal. They're yeah. the ones who keep people in line. They're kind of the mediator roles usually yeah and i usually played like played no yeah i played more like kinder characters in a way very light very comfortable easygoing and very very cottage core characters very cottage core characters which reminiscent on who we are yeah i like irl but then we wanted to challenge each other and so we switched up the roles I was um, the one who voiced Eve, the girl who literally cooked her entire family to feed Danny on their meet the family dinner. She did meet the family. <laughs> All and right. All the meat was the meat. The family. Oh, shit. They were yummy. <laughs> the family Delicious. was the meat. <laughs> meat and greet. <laughs> Meet the family, but I think there was a typo and she rolled with it. Yeah, but it was very challenging for me because Eve was uh, very... Psychotic? Well, not... what well, In a way... It, she was more of a calm villain. In a way. I mean, as not like... Villain, antagonist. In, in terms of, like, psychopaths, they're also, like, very quiet and they don't really divulge a lot of information. They just say things as it is. And she's like, do you want to have dinner? We can have dinner. Like, I cooked for you. I prepared this for you. And it was... Even I was a bit scared of myself because I haven't sort of voiced anyone who was very... Um, threatening? What's the word? Yeah, threatening, ominous, and just sort of like cunning in a way. Like a very silent, cunning character. And it was a challenge, but we, we pushed through. And I'd say she did really amazing. She yeah. freaked me out. I don't. I would not cook my family. Really good you guys. Role. <laughs> I, again, I was not involved in this episode because it was a very femme centric episode. Femme centric, queer women, queer women. women who kill. <laughs> women who kill. Women who kill. <laughs> but yeah. Then we had episode nine of the Pugs. Yeah, Pugs Only. It was. It was it was reuse episode I remember. Yeah. It was about a kid who felt like their parents would be better off without them and they were given by the keeper a choice whether or not they want to see that kind of life. What it's like without them. Yeah, and it sort of like affected the timeline of the entire like pod. Yeah. In the a entire way. catalog uh, verse. 
Yeah. Um. Ooh, mm, oh, interesting. Some Entire catalog. Foreshadowing. Verse. Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. That's the only tidbit you're gonna get. <laughs> but as for the story itself, um, the voices for that one was, um, Misu, me, and another friend. Again, I was a dad. Again, he was a dad. He and was he was also dad. the keeper. And he was also a dad who was arguing with his wife. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. Yes. Also, and March was me. also the main keeper of the episode there. Like, she was the one who voiced the character in story. Meanwhile, Miso, you were also the keeper for the opening spiel. <laughs> yeah, I was. Mm. Uh, and I think that's one thing uh, we can talk about because in episode. Well, not really episode. In season one, you don't really hear the word keeper. So, but if you recall, uh, in Cold Case, at the beginning of Cold Case, Detective Ilori sort of like ends up in a catalog. And there was a voice there, a very echoey voice that talks to her, asks her why she ended up there and what what the hell she was doing there in the first place. How you here? Like, why you here? Why you he- how you get here? I don't know. That character, as much as there were no mentions of what that character's name is, we call them the, the keeper. keeper. So, in the catalogs, we have uh, this, um, like, entity. entity who sort of, like, oversees everything happening in the catalogs, the books, and the stories there. And that entity is called the Keeper. And during episode 9, Pagsaoli, we got to hear the Keeper again. Um, Last we heard of her was episode 1. And for episode 9, we got to hear the Keeper talk to... Um, who was the, 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 the to Rico? Me. It was Marcy. <laughs> we were so it, it's it's so funny. Of, the parallels because Elori <laughs> talks to the keeper, and now a little a little, a little kid, kid voiced by you by <laughs> it's talks so to the keeper. It's still us talking to each other. Hello. But yes, um, we'll get to learn more about the keeper probably in season two. We don't know that. You never um, know. But. We'll see. Uh, we have stuff planned for them, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> We're not gonna tell we you say. more. <laughs> we we make hush hush. Yeah, that's all we can say about that. Mm. Uh, but then we have uh, episode ten, Lubog. Lub- our yeah, last episode me. again for season leading one. back to the fear of uh, drowning, which is so nice because it cycles back. Yeah. Again, that episode was. I wanted it to be headed by one of you guys that had a fear of depths. I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted it to be headed by one of you guys at least, but it landed onto me. Yeah. So I took it and uh, went as well as I could. Eh, I think, well, I think I could have done more with the concept, mm-hmm. but we were not given that much time. Yeah, we were. I think. Um... Starting we were episode very nearing exam seasons episode yeah. ten. Exam I... seasons and it was our final year of college, yeah. which final was the year. most hectic. And like with episode eight, I think episode eight onwards, that's when like production started to like Become slow and falter a bit. And we weren't able to and I will I will be very transparent about that. We weren't able to put our best foot, foot forward, forward for these episodes. And yeah, I I agree. I feel like we could have done more with episode ten. But all in all, at at the very least we were able to deliver a story that's also Keeping sort of up. like aligning with the stories we put out yeah. before it. And it was it was a good close in a way. Cuz episode 10 was just going to be more to it. But then we had thesis coming up. Yeah, we did. Graduation, internships. internships. So most other writers well I was expecting like when I assigned, you know, uh, 
the parts of which writer was going to write which parts. I wrote uh, a long part there as well. You did, Ro did, Ryu wrote less than what I expected him to write, but still acceptable. I just added more to it so we could get the episode longer. But I didn't think that the episode would be that short. Yeah. But then... It It was sufficiently ominous. It was sufficiently ominous. But you never know. Such short episodes can be... Could play big. So... Oh, could big. be oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> but like yeah you we never know because like as much as we have learned from a lot of our trial and errors in season one we're still a learning. learning bunch we're a learning bunch and a lot of our progress in season two was like thought out and planned and we really put in a lot of time preparing ourselves into like producing season two we had to like mentally and physically prepare ourselves yeah. find like a good like schedule and like actually i think for season one's episode 10 mm-hmm. would have benefited more with the script format we're writing for season, with season two. two right now yeah it but... would have benefited a lot more because then Ryu would have been able to do a lot more with his part. Because mm-hmm. most of his part was good. Like, I feel like um could have benefited with a lot more internal monologue. Yeah. And descriptions of how the character was feeling. But so, we were able to deliver that yeah. in a way. It's it just, was still good. It was still good. Um, A little... Uh, more, I can't find the word. Lord. I can't find the good, healthy, critical word. <laughs> but um, yeah, we could have done a little bit more exploration yeah. for episode ten. But then again, we didn't have a lot of time yeah. to like focus on it and. Proofread, and, Proofread uh, polish, polish, production. Panicked. It was a very panicked. It was a very panicked, a very panicked very close, time. and and it reflected in the way we wrote it. Mm-mm. We drowned. We made the bog. We wow. drowned. You guys. That was the Reflection. essence of the episode. <laughs> Lubog. Lubog. We made Lubog with we sank, all the guys, work we that we had, <laughs> but you know. Fresh start, season two is coming out and everything's next more, month. And everything's actually planned. Everything's actually Yay, planned. Plans. And like uh, record and actually finish things. Yeah. We're getting close. We're getting close. As of now, we're at th- at this point, um recording. You're probably gonna hear this sometime in October, but uh at this point we recorded this way before we're still currently recording for season two. And I, we're excited to get stuff done. We have, we, we, we're following a workflow. Finally. That, finally. Yeah. That's working for us. A few Everything. delays, but yeah, like, they're minor compared to before. Yeah, it's okay. It's definitely a lot more easier compared to when we started out because we were in school. Right now we have like enough time to just sort of extend when we need to because we can't overexert ourselves that's it's a tall order this is a podcast that's very small it's still growing and run by at the moment three people yeah who are working who are working we need money (laughs) but yeah hopefully by season two we get to apply what we've learned for season one and like if mistakes are made in season two then, we learn from them. then I guess we learn from the season three. <laughs> season three. Let's fix everything, boys. But yeah, we'll see for next month 
Um, I think at this point in the juncture, <laughs> in the juncture, the juncture we were able. Okay, we were able to discuss our feedback form, discuss a bit of our episodes and our process. Now it's just yapping time. It's um, I mean, we did yap, but then I guess we could advertise a little bit for season two. What are we expecting? Okay. Of course, oh, no right. spoilers. Aside from um, the podcast, we might start streaming um, D and D sessions on Twitch. Yeah, on <laughs> Twitch. On Twitch, baby. Don't know whose channel it'll be on, but probably Marcy's. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marcy, for housing our D and D session. Hey, I got you. I Hopefully, will. I, I will make keep... you an overlay if you wanted to. I would. Please. I would. That would be great. We're just gonna be in one. We're just gonna be here using your laptop oh, yeah. and then the mics. We have our mics. Yeah, we're just we gonna have be bringing mics. our own mics. Have mics. Like we're just gonna be bringing our own mics, and then I just narrate for you guys. Yeah, it's Mind you, very he's a fun. great DM. So yeah, there's. Uh, <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> you Look are at a me. great DM. Look at me. Don't come back, you motherfucker. Um, okay, personal yapping time with, like, on the topic of d and I was someone who was always interested in playing D&D, but I never had, like, friends to play it with. Play it with. And, like, growing up, I just never learned how to. I didn't have, like, player confidence. I didn't know what the kind of die were. Goichi was like, roll a d20, and I was like, what's that? <laughs> But then um, they were able to invite me in a campaign, and our, our, our very first campaign. our very first camp. Well, friend. my very first campaign with them, and I I just want to say, Koichi as a DM was very patient with me as a new player. I applaud you for your. <laughs> He's also a massive sadist. Me. But then, like, with no. Koichi, I really yes, learned are. a lot about, like, you know, playing the game. And a lot more than that, just sort of, like... Keeping yourself away yeah, keeping from the your, character. Keeping your character, like, alive and separate. And, like, building off of the, like, experience that the DM is writing for you. It's pretty good. And, like... Now I'm a little more comfortable playing, and it's all thanks to this guy. <laughs> it's also a lot of um, playing off of um, what the other players gave to yeah. them as fellow players, and then there's me inserting. Oh, also fun fact: this. And we're like, oh no, oh, fuck. <laughs> but I yeah, we. Ha- I think that's pretty good. With, mm. like, this tandem of the three of us. Because we do a lot of things that, like, foster really good, like, like bondings. Bonding. Bonding. <laughs> Team building. Another, another thing about with that campaign that we had before with the other friends was that with a lot more people, if someone missed an opportunity and someone else saw that, they could just... Grab it. They could j- steal. <laughs> Example was um, yeah um, we call it the Merim incident because the character's name is Merim, <laughs> and these, like this um entire scenario was meant for another character, um, who was a vampire, half vampire, a vampire, and um, she missed every cue I gave her, and then. Marge's character, uh, Kaylin, was like, oh, okay, yoink. Yoinks. <laughs> that entire session was supposed to be for the Dampier, right? It became a Kaylin centered episode. And it's, it's funny, us. too, because my character didn't actively steal the scene because she was just there trying to assist everyone. But then the dice decided to put all eyes on her <laughs> and i was like oh no <laughs> your characters have such a way with um being the center of entity presence and love i, I don't guess. know why <laughs> they keep doing that her characters have a very consistent like 
a pattern, by the way. There is a track record for every character of our campaigns. Her character is most likely to be watched over, adopted, or basically befriend an entity. A very strong, monstrous entity usually just decides, oh, this one. Yoink! You're mine now. You're my friend now. Or you're my daughter now. Friend! Friend. (laughs) Friendship cantrips, everybody! (laughs) But yeah, I don't know why they keep doing that. Also, but... if you're expecting our D and D campaigns to go like by the book, no, 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 they're not. They're all homebrew. Listen, the we... rules don't matter. Chaos reigns over everything, and uh, may the gods be with you. That's our. Or, that's our. Style. Or against you, because I think against <laughs> you are against and that. And we also technically we don't own the books. We don't know how to play by the books, even if we had them. Because it's a whole thing. We don't have money. Hmm. And we, we could don't learn. have other people to we play. We could learn to play we by the learn. book. But then... We don't have other people the homebrew, as well. Yeah. The homebrew I've setup already, we have. I've already downloaded like PDFs of the... Like, of the, the book. book yeah. And, stuff. and honestly... D&D for me isn't really about the rules. Yeah, the rule book streamlined it. The, and they gave you like... A guide on how the monsters are supposed to work and how races work. How races work, yeah. But to me, the rule book is just a guide. It's not rules. They're just there to help you build your own world. Because playing a campaign to me, D and D, right? It's not just about following a set of rules that someone else already made and like just following the world that they already made, you make your own so that your players also have fun with you. It's like a collaborative um, writing experience. Yeah. I don't know if it's like that for you guys, too. Mm-hmm. It, very, it really is. It is. Sorry, I have a cracker in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's very collaborative. But I, I think that's the general, like, way to describe it it's a very collaborative game because in a way with like dms they have an outline ready for their players to either follow or derail and they have they have like like a world building plan ready they have their characters how their characters work and then you have the players who actively contribute to that so it's very collaborative and like in a way it's just a circle building a story together it's very nice and that's what we do in the podcast <laughs> nice it, it benefits <laughs> both us like in general thank you and also for the stories of the podcast because we're still working together might as well make fun stuff even outside of it yeah there's no fun in just Burying yourself in work completely. Yeah. It's um also very the way that um the DM makes the world, the players react to, to the, the world. characters. To the characters. Uh, like the characters of the players react to the world and the world reacts to them. Yeah. It's fun. It's react and response. Mm-hmm. It makes the stories that you guys play and in D and D feel more alive. Even if you don't actually live roleplay them, like voice act and um, have figurines of them, it makes them more alive in your head. Yeah. Thank you for the cracker. <laughs> but yeah, we have a lot in store for um, both campaigns and the podcast. Yeah. So much. Yeah. And we've been talking for like this Q and A two hours, I think. <laughs> we expected thirty minutes. Yeah, but like you know, there was a lot to talk about, a lot to be transparent about, and just a lot to yap about, like just before season two starts. But yeah, uh, stay tuned for D and D. Stay tuned for D and D. D baby. We will link it on our social media pages as well, so you get to see where to go. <laughs> what if we had a D and D where it's like based on 
who are our characters from the podcast. Right? Ooh. I mean, I already did suggest that. Yeah, you did. So why not? I just have to finish world building it. Which is going to take a while. <laughs> it's going to take a while. You never know. It could be a platform for us to um <clears throat> drop more lore. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> drop more lore. Drop more lore. Correct. <laughs> but yeah, um aside from that, um once production for season 2 finishes, expect some stuff to pop up in like Facebook Reels, Instagram, TikTok, TikTok. YouTube Shorts maybe. We're going to yeah. utilize TikTok, guys. We're going to We're going <laughs> to use the Tiki Talkies. <laughs> the Tiki Talks. We're going to give you guys TikTok sounds. And also maybe our bloopers. Who knows? We might even do random character-based bullshit. Yeah. Who knows? We'll the see. Prime we'll of see. The hound. The prime, prime of the, the hound. hound. You'll see. You'll definitely see a lot more content in the coming month. S- like next month. Um, about like the podcast. Um, not just the usuals that you see that we post online. There's definitely going to be more information some nice visuals Ooh. some art <laughs> we'll see we'll see and i hope those would be able to help our listeners like be immersed in the world more yeah. so i'm looking forward to that uh season two of tales from the cattle i can't believe uh, we get to say that now we have a season <laughs> Season 2 of Tales from the Catalogs will be streaming on Spotify and YouTube officially on October 31st, 2024. Add to your playlist. Add it. Uh, save. Save. Well, I don't know how to do pre-saves. <laughs> but we'll see. Follow. It will be the usual um, live stream for YouTube. And then... An hour after that, you'll be able to stream the episode again on Spotify. So, ee- see you. See you. See you there. This has been our <laughs> overdue Q and A episode. Uh, two year. A two. Year. <laughs> it's a bit, well, a year in a, a way. Year overdue. A year overdue, but we were able to deliver. Delivery. Shopee delivery. Not sponsored. Delivery. Ah! <laughs> but yeah, um, thank you so much for listening through this um, not session. so little yeah, session. I hope you are able to find like a few tidbits of information that you might want to take note for the next season. And uh, we hope to see you around. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.